One of the common regrets in life is, I wish I'd known sooner what I know now. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about now. I want to talk to you about five things I wish I had known maybe 10 years ago. And that really depends upon how you look at life. And I honestly believe that regret is a waste of human spirit. So these aren't things necessarily that I regret, but they are things that were clues and lessons for me in life that I wanted to share. So hopefully you learn things much faster than I did. And most of my working life, I was a corporate worker. I've worked for companies like PwC, Lockheed Martin, Lucent Technologies, AT&T, and General Mills. And I've had a few others that weren't quite as large. But I learned something in each of them. But what I really learned was, I'd say somewhere between after the year 2000 and moving forward, there were clues that things were changing and that the old life where you got a retirement, a pension, and a gold watch at the end isn't the way things work anymore. So let me go ahead and start off with the five things. Number one, you aren't on the path to success by building someone else's dreams. And that's what you're doing as an employee. You are building someone else's dreams. So you are a little cog in their machine. Now, sometimes employees get treated very well. I know there have been places where I've worked where I was treated very well, but I'd say over the past 15 years, that's kind of gone out the window. I was seeing more of an asset or a tool to be used they would call me up in the middle of the night or on the weekends. They'd demand certain things immediately. And it was really more of a take kind of environment from the management side than a giving side. And that's just one of the things I've just realized. We expect, as employees, we expect loyalty. We expect some stability in exchange. We work for them. And that's not enough for them anymore. A lot of management, particularly in corporate environments, demand more and more. They want your life. They want you there maybe 12 hours a day and possibly weekends as well too. And that adds a lot of stress to your life. It adds a lot of stress to your family life. And it, it can have some adverse health and physical effects. I know it did on me. And I didn't even realize how much of an effect it had on me until after I left a few years ago and got much healthier as a result. But the nice part about this is that living wage that was the American dream for so long isn't really the same anymore. Number two, I kind of brought this up, pensions and gold watches at retirements no longer exist. Now, both of my parents, they worked for the same employer, and my father actually did get a gold watch. My mother had a pension. She also got a lifetime free insurance. That is a big deal, and she knew she wanted that. She was willing to accept an early retirement at the age of 50 to get that deal because AT&T, her employer, was going through some cuts and laying off. And they said, well, this is a way we can get people to voluntarily leave. That way we pay them off a little bit now and it'll save us a lot of money later on. That was uh, something that AT&T decided to do and she took advantage of it. I don't think she regrets that for a moment, but she hated her job because it was just a nasty working environment. My father worked for Martin Marietta and then Lockheed Martin. And he was in management, probably middle to upper management. He wasn't really all that thrilled with some of the things that were changing, particularly from Martin Marietta to Lockheed Martin, but they kind of came down the pike and he said, you know what, I've got so much more to go until retirement. And he was the kind of person who would just go in there and do what he needed to do. In fact, they transferred him from our location here in Orlando up to one near Ocala, a little town called Bellevue. So every day he'd get in his little Volkswagen Beetle and he'd commute up to Ocala, probably about 90 minutes drive, and then he'd come back. So it was really a long day and he had to put up with that to keep his job because after having worked there for most of his life, he didn't want to have to go out and find another job. He was dedicated and loyal to the company and this is what they required of him. Number three, raises and promotions aren't like they used to be. And you probably know this, but let me get a little statistic. I'm reading off the screen here. There's a company called WTW. It's one of the largest insurance advisory and brokerage firms. They did a survey of U.S. companies and conducted in early 2022. And the average salary increase was 3.4%. Less than half of what the current inflation rate was at 7.9% at the time. At year end, they did another survey and the salary increase grew to 4.2%, but still below the, inf the inflation rate of 6.4%. And... There's a couple of problems with this. First off, you're not getting the raises like you used to get. Two to 3% is what I saw as an average when I was at PwC. And that was 
when they told you you're doing a great job, we're going to get you a good raise, and then they come back with this. You're middle of the road, and they say, well, you're doing the job they want you to do. You're not worth much more than that. And that's kind of really disheartening. It doesn't make you want to do as much of an effort going on when you know that you're actually losing money with your inflation compared to your raise. But that's okay. Corporations don't like to promote from within anymore. And this is something also that's changed in the past 15 to 20 years. Because they look at it this way. Let's say there's someone higher up the chain and that person vacates a position. Maybe they've left the company, retired, whatever. So they have to find a new candidate for that. In the old days, people would want to promote from within. They want to stay within the family. But that caused a problem for them. And that's what employers have realized today. When they promote somebody from within, well, that leaves an opening someplace else. They have to find someone to fill that position. If they promote from within to fill all these downstream positions, that's a lot of time, it's a lot of money, and it's a lot of work. What they've found out now is it is much less expensive to advertise the job and get somebody from the outside, preferably from a competitor, because not only do they avoid all that downstream work and effort they have to do to keep filling these positions, but they get someone who should be qualified for the job and has insider knowledge of their competitor. They see that as a bigger win than promoting from within. And that's just the way it is. They expect most employees will work two, three years, maybe four at the tops, and then leave and go get another job. And that's the way the workforce has become now. It's not like it used to be. You're not going to get the raises because they don't expect you to stay and they don't want to help you move upstream. It's It's a sad thing for me because I grew up kind of in between these two ages, you know, with my parents having lifelong loyalty to one employer, whereas now you're expected to leave and move and get another job. Which brings me to number four. You know something worth selling. If you've got an experience working for someplace else, you know something, you've got experience, and you don't have to know everything, but you know something worth selling. Now, that could be something digital, like a course or a membership. Or it could be that maybe you know how to solve a problem. You could be a consultant someplace. Maybe you know how to create a product that will solve a problem. If you can solve somebody else's pain and frustration, you know something worth selling. And that is just something that you need to do or think about. Instead of going from job to job to job, maybe you need to think about becoming an entrepreneur. Honestly, the schools don't teach us to be entrepreneurs. They teach us to follow orders, get a job and pay off your college debt. That brings me to number five. Every day that you waste, not starting up your own business, not becoming an entrepreneur, is a waste of your potential. You have so much more that you could potentially earn and be happier with your own business rather than being a, an employee, or as I like to call it, a corporate drone. So yes, over my career, I earned my first million dollars. I'm on pace to earn a lot more. I have greater potential with doing what I'm doing now with my course, with my membership, and just serving people, even doing some bit of affiliate marketing. There is a lot more opportunity. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some work. You're going to have to know something, and you're also going to have to know how to sell and market it. And that's what we try to teach you here at Suburbia Press. Also, how to build a website that converts people. There's a whole process and flow. And that's what we try to help you with. And I know a lot of people don't understand what creates a high converting website. That's why I wrote my guide. It is called the top 10 questions about a high converting website. It's to help you understand what you need to know and what you need to do in order to build a high converting website. What are the factors that are really at play and what makes a difference between a website that people trust and a website that people don't trust. The sad truth is, Just having a website isn't enough. Most websites don't make many sales. That's fixable. Even if you already have a website, you can learn the right things to put on it, the right things to say to your potential customers and how to promote it. It's just something that you're not going to be taught in school. And in most cases, you're not going to be taught at your old job, but it is possible. All you need to do is learn. So I'd urge you to go to conversionquestions.com, get the guide, and get started. And that will help you get on your own path to becoming an entrepreneur. And maybe it's something you start as a side hustle. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I did the same thing. But there is a lot more opportunity doing what you know and love 
and what you can show other people and alleviate their pain than you can get working for somebody else. If you're frustrated with your career, think about it. Is it your employer or is it going to be the same way at the next job and the next and the next? If that is, that's a downhill roller coaster that maybe you want to escape. All right, that's really all I've got to say right now. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for signing in here. If you like this video, please go ahead, click the like button. That lets the YouTube overlords know we've done something right, and they will share this with more people. Until the next video, I'll see you then.